To many in the United States, K-pop appears to have taken the music industry by storm, attracting Western audiences all over with larger-than-life music videos, coordinated dance moves, and seemingly flawless skin. Some of the most notable groups as of 2019 have been reported to bring in as much as $3.6 billion to the Korean economy. But was the musical miracle of K-pop an overnight success? Or a manufactured commodity built with the intention of captivating audiences abroad? So one of the things that I think about when talking about K-pop is how K-pop is different than Korean popular music. Uh, so Korean popular music is the pop music that's in Korea. And K-pop is kind of the genre of Korean popular music that uh, people outside of Korea think about when they think about Korean popular music and is branded specifically um, as Korean popular music for a non-Korean audience. Different people would put the origins of K-pop at a different kind of place. There's a group that a lot of people note as kind of one of the foundational groups for K-pop, which is Seo Taiji and the Boys. So in 1992, um, they were a group that introduced hip hop and rap into Korean popular music. The introduction of hip hop and rap in Korean popular music is the kind of birth of K-pop. Um, while there are different kinds of factors that are involved in kind of the um, creation of K-pop and the export of K-pop. So one thing that is relatively unique to the situation is that the Korean government actually sets out policy to support the creative cultural industries, right? So these are things like K-pop, K-drama, film, etc. So these are things that uh, the Korean government wants to invest in as an export product. Um, Korea has definitely taken over the Japanese market and the Chinese market, which are really important markets. To a certain extent, for anybody in the world, like the American market is the prize. Like if you've made it in America, you've made it like on the global stage. Uh, so a lot of the fan practices around K-pop are things that I don't think will translate in America in the same way. For example, boys love and shipping. The vast majority of these idols are not gay, uh, but it's something that they and the companies promote some people would argue is that uh, if an idol gets married, they become off limits. So like a lot of the companies hide their dating life and stuff like that. Um, so that's something that has to be kept secret because for the fans, they always have to believe that the idol is available for them. One of the conventions of K-pop as a genre is that every um, song has a dance choreography that's unique. And then within that unique dance choreography, there's often what's called the signature move, and it's very, very recognizable. Things like dance, I think, are more important in K-pop because people can't even lip sync to Korean because they don't know the words and they don't know the language. Whereas the dance kind of has this um, ability to be copied by other people who have you know, no understanding of Korean or no understanding of the context, etc. Part of kind of the, the dance is also a group choreography. So then it becomes a social activity where, you know, people can get together and practice together and things like that. There are people who say that there's nothing Korean about K-pop. I would disagree with that. But I would also say that you can't call it just Korean, right? It's already been hybridized with Japanese, American, and so many other kind of um, sources that to call it Korean authentically and essentially is also, I think, a mistake. The rise of the Korean wave is also a rise of kind of middle class consumerism in Asia overall. The Korean wave would never have happened, for example, without a middle class in China, without a middle class in the Philippines, Thailand, Taiwan, um, other kind of neighboring countries, because those are the people who are buying K-pop, or those are the people who are most invested in K-pop. And in order for that market to have been created, you need kind of the middle class in these other kind of neighboring countries in East and Southeast Asia to produce kind of the demand for the product. The genre of K-pop itself is also changing. So we have our first uh, mixed sex band. There's now more like non-Koreans in K-pop. So I think that's gonna change the dynamics. There are Americans doing K-pop. There are um, the K-pop bands themselves now have idols who are from. Japan, who are from Thailand, who are from other countries, right? So that's gonna also change, I think, the, the flavor of K-pop.